Welcome to the Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. My name is Drew Chavon and I'm an extension specialist with the University of Maryland. In previous videos we've explored how to size the wires for a solar electric system, how to assemble PV wire and their connectors, how to wire a solar combiner box, and even how to wire solar panels in a series configuration. You can review any of those previous videos for more information, but in today's video we'll see how to wire or connect multiple solar panels together into a parallel configuration. And we'll explore some of the reasons why we might opt to wire the panels in parallel. Now, solar panels are said to be connected in parallel with one another whenever the circuit is branched with only a portion of the system's total current flowing through each branch. As a review, voltage will increase across a string of solar panels that are connected in series while the electrical current will remain unchanged. In that case, two solar panels, each having a voltage of 20 volts and a current of 5 amps, would have a total voltage of 40 volts with the current remaining at 5 amps when they're connected in series. This will provide a total output of 200 watts. But when connecting these two solar panels in a parallel configuration, the voltage will remain the same while the current will add up. So in the parallel configuration, the voltage would remain at 20 volts based on the voltage of each solar panel, while the current would be doubled to 10 amps. And so it's important to check your wire size to make sure that your wiring can handle that increased current. You may need to increase the diameter of your wiring if the current is high enough to warrant that increase, but you can review our previous video on wire sizing for more information on that topic. In any case, the total output would be the same at 200 watts. Now before we make any connections with actual solar panels today, we'll consider some of the pros and cons for parallel configurations. Once again, from a previous video, we saw how a series configuration, such as this series of light bulbs, will stop working if one wire were to break. And that's because the negative lead from the first light is connected to the positive lead of the second light, and so on, with only one pathway for the current to flow. However, in a parallel configuration, all the positive wires are connected to each other, and all the negative wires are connected to each other. So if one of the wires breaks in a parallel configuration, the other lights in the circuit will still work. And the same trends can be expected with solar panels connected in a series or parallel configuration. If one solar panel fails in a series configuration, then the whole circuit would be impacted. But if one solar panel fails in a parallel configuration, then only that one branch would be impacted. If there was shading on one solar panel connected in series, then the power output of the whole string would suffer due to the reduced electrical current flowing through the circuit. But with the same shading on a solar panel connected in a parallel configuration, the power output would only be reduced by the same as the impacted panel. So a parallel configuration may provide higher efficiency if any shading is expected or during periods of low solar irradiance. Now, in addition to verifying your system will meet the minimum and maximum voltages required for a charge controller or other component downstream, you'll need to select components that can handle the larger electrical current that's flowing through the parallel configuration. In a series configuration, the voltage will reach the minimum input threshold of the charge controller rather quickly, even putting energy into the battery during early and late sun hours. The voltage level of a parallel configuration, on the other hand, may not reach the minimum threshold of the charge controller until periods of increased solar irradiance. Any possible voltage drop should also be considered as it could cause the voltage of your system to drop below the minimal threshold of the charge controller. Long wire runs, for instance, will result in significant drops in the system voltage. This becomes a greater issue with parallel configurations, which already have low voltage. Voltage levels will also drop in hotter temperatures. In that case, you may need to stick with a series configuration if you're working with a long wire run and are expecting fairly hot temperatures. Otherwise, you just need to ensure that you have sufficient voltage coming from your parallel string. Now, with those design considerations in mind, we'll consider some of the steps that are required to actually connect the solar panels together in a parallel configuration. And we can either use a combiner box like we've used in previous videos, or we can use special branch connectors or couplers. But in either case, a parallel configuration requires all of the positive wires to be connected together and all the negative wires to be connected together, and we'll be left with a single pair of positive and negative wires running downstream to a charge controller or other component within the system. Now again, the back of most solar panels are manufactured with a positive and negative cable extending from the junction box. These leads are typically labeled with the proper positive and negative indicators, but the male MC4 housing is typically the positive lead, and the female MC4 housing is typically the negative. 
While these MC4 type connectors are fairly common, you may be working with another type of connector in your own solar electric system. With that said, it's always a good idea to double check this polarity with a multimeter as we've done before. But once the polarity of the wires has been confirmed, you can label the positive wire with a piece of red tape. And then before we connect any wires, we'll cover the front of the solar panel so that there's no live voltage within the system. We'll start by using these simple branch couplers that are convenient for smaller systems like we'll be working with in today's video. And these particular couplers can handle up to 30 amps, but you'll need to check the rating of any connector that you might be using in your own system. Just be sure that the coupler that you select for your system can handle the increased current that will be put through the circuit. While most solar panels are designed to handle some backfeeding, you may run the risk of damaging your solar panels if you connect too many panels together with these couplers since the couplers themselves don't provide overcurrent protection. Now a quick note on the connector type and fittings. You'll need to have couplers that match the type of connectors coming from your solar panels, commonly MC4 connectors. And for simple applications like we'll see in today's video, you'll need two couplers. The first will transition from two female receivers down to one male plug, and the other coupler will transition from two male plugs down to one female receiver. As a precaution, you'll need to pay particular attention to the male-female notation on these couplers, as some retailers may refer to the plastic housing of the actual connector, while others will refer to the metal contacts within the plastic housing. As we've discussed in previous videos, the male plastic housing contains a female metal contact, while the female plastic housing contains the male metal contact. So again, just make sure you understand which is which, but for today's video, we'll use one of each. That's a two female to one male, and two male to one female. Now to begin our parallel connection with these 100 watt panels for instance, we'll connect the positive MC4 connector from both of the panels into the same branch coupler. And we should hear a clicking sound with these interlocking connectors. Then we'll connect the negative lead from both of the panels into the other branch coupler. So now we have our two male leads wired together and two female leads wired together. And we're left with a single positive lead and a single negative lead coming from this parallel configuration. Now if we had three or more solar panels, we could use special branch couplers like this 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 MC4 connector. But depending on the size of the solar panels, we'd likely need to introduce fuses into the system. These inline MC4 fuses are a rather convenient option to do that. And in that case, we'd simply fuse the positive lead from each solar panel and then connect the other end of it to the branch coupler. If on the other hand, all you have available is some 2 to 1 couplers, it's still possible to work with more solar panels in the system just by staggering these 2 to 1 couplers. But once again, you'd likely need to fuse all the positive leads. But in any sense, we end up with a branch connector at the end of each wire, one on the positive lead and one on the negative lead coming from the solar array. Now we can easily attach extension cables to each end as we've done in previous videos, with their length just depending on how far away your DC load center or charge controller is from the actual solar array. For today's video, we'll simply attach some PV cable that was previously prepared to each end of this solar array. We should once again hear a clicking sound when these interlocking connectors are coupled with the output of their corresponding branch coupler. And in this case, each extension wire has been cut and stripped on the downstream end where they will connect with the breaker or charge controller. Just be careful not to cross these wires together whenever the solar panels are exposed to sunlight as that could short out the diodes within the junction box. But in any sense, we now have our two solar panels wired in parallel with their output extended by some length to reach downstream components. Now, we could also wire these 100 watt solar panels in parallel using a combiner box as we've done in previous videos. And like we just did, we just need to make sure the solar panels are still covered before we make the connection. Now we'll open this electrical box revealing the fuses on the left side as well as the circuit breaker that can easily be turned off. With the breaker turned off, there will be no output coming out of it. But remember, you will still have power input whenever the solar panels are exposed to sunlight. So you want to be careful because there could be power between the negative bus bar and the bottom of the breakers if the panels are indeed exposed to the sun. But we've got the panels covered now and we'll complete the wiring within the box much like we've done in previous videos. We'll start by connecting the positive and negative line coming from the first solar panel to their corresponding connectors that are installed on the side of the electrical box. You could also use strain release to pass through each wire as we've done in previous videos. In any sense, we'll do the same with the second solar panel, connecting the positive and negative from the panel to the corresponding connectors on the side of this box. Now, the leads from both solar panels are securely connected to the electrical system within the enclosure. Once again, you may need some extension wire if any of your positive or negative leads are too short to reach the combiner box. 
You can review a previous video in this series for more information on preparing PV extension wires and their corresponding connectors. But in this case, our positive and negative leads are directly connected to the electrical enclosure with no need for PV extension cable. And since we're only connecting two panels in parallel, we have an additional two unused circuits within this particular enclosure. So we could easily add a third or fourth string in parallel if we needed to. But the process would be the same no matter how many strings you are connecting in parallel. Just make sure your electrical enclosure can handle the number of strings that you intend to work with. But opening this enclosure, we can see the positive line from both of the solar panels connected at the bottom of their respective fuse, while the negative line from each of the solar panels is connected to the negative bus bar. You may want to review our previous video on fuse sizing or check the data label on the back of your solar panel to determine the max series fuse size or the short circuit current of the solar panel in amps. You would just need to multiply that short circuit current by a safety factor of 1.56 as we've done previously. Besides the positive and negative lines, we also have a ground wire coming from the racking system that will be connected to the grounding bus bar. Then all the output lines will be passed through strain release on the bottom of the electrical enclosure, where they'll run downstream to whatever the next component of the electrical system might be. So this is just another way to wire the solar panel in parallel. Now once the output lines have been connected with the rest of the electrical system, we can uncover the solar panels to expose them to sunlight. With the panels producing power again, we can measure the voltage and current using a digital multimeter. We'll measure DC voltage by selecting the appropriate voltage setting on the multimeter, connecting the negative lead to the negative bus bar, and connecting the positive lead to the positive input. In this case, we have a little over 23.5 volts on the first string, and about the same voltage on the second string. So both strings are operating to the same voltage. Now turning our breaker back on and moving to the positive bus bar, we measure a combined output of 23.5 volts, which is about the same as each independent string, demonstrating that the voltage remains unchanged in a parallel configuration. So in this case, the parallel connection of these 100 watt solar panels allows us to maintain a nominal 12 volts that could be connected to a 12 volt battery system. We can also measure the current flowing through this configuration by selecting the appropriate current setting on the multimeter and repeating a similar procedure. There's not much sunlight right now, so our current is remaining relatively low. But in this case, we measure an electrical current of about 3.3 amps in the first string, while the second string is going up to about 3.6 amps. Measuring the combined output, however, gives us between 6.6 .6 and 7.0 amps flowing through the system, which is about double the current of each independent string. So with a parallel configuration, the current of each string will be added together while the voltage remains the same. Well, I hope this video has provided you with an understanding of how and why you might wire solar panels in parallel with one another and how this configuration will increase the electrical current flowing through the solar electric system while maintaining the same voltage level. In upcoming videos, we'll consider more complicated series and parallel configurations as well as other aspects involved in stringing solar panels together. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of the Solar Clips video series, but in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar, photovoltaics, and other energy-related topics.